All right, this is for the review uh, for test number um, three. All right, so um, th this question says, um, the first one uh, says, star has a surface temperature of 18,500 Kelvin and a luminosity of 0 0.045 times that of our sun. What is the star's radius compared to the radius of the sun? And so we use the equation that I have already written here. Um, we just need to put the numbers in, right? So so R, the radius of the star, the S stands for star, you know, at, the other one is for sun. All right, so the, the luminosity of the star, it tells us that, that it's, it's uh, 0 0.45 times that of the sun, right? So you can see that right there. Um, so, so what we do is it's, it, that number just becomes 0 0.045 times, that's supposed to be a 4, 0 0.45 uh, uh, times the luminosity of our sun, and then it of course is divided by the luminosity of our sun. And, and any time you do this, the luminosity of the sun is, is, you know, it's always given in terms of, you know, some number times the luminosity of the sun, and then that entire thing is raised to the one-half power so the luminosity of the sun cancels. And so it's just really the, you know, 0 0.045 to the one half power, which is of course 0 0.045, it's the square root of 0 0.045, right? It's the same thing. Um, all right, and then the one thing that you have to remember is the surface of our sun is at 6,000 Kelvin, so 6,000. The Kelvins always cancel because the the star's temperature is always measured in Kelvin, and they give it to us up here as 18,500. That's supposed to be a five uh, Kelvin, and the Kelvins cancel, and you square that, right? So you square that fraction, and so th these two things are just numbers, and they multiply times the radius of our sun. All right, so let's let's figure out what this what this is. All right, I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna do this part first. The the uh, six thousand divided by eighteen hundred, eighteen, sorry, eighteen thousand. So it's six thousand. I'm just gonna turn on the calculator. Six thousand divided by eighteen thousand five hundred. Um, all right, so uh, you get a really small, you know, point three four, point three two four, and so forth. Uh, I've got to square that. Right, so square it, and so it's it's even smaller. It becomes point. So so this part of the equation um, now becomes point zero. Uh, so sorry, zero point one zero five. Zero point one zero five. Yeah, um, and then now we got to do this part of the equation. So this is just taking the square root of um, point zero four. Uh, is 0 0.045. All right, so I'm going to multiply that, um, this part. It, it turns out it's, it's easier to do this part first, um, the, the fraction first, because uh, th this, you know, the, like I said, all the, the luminosity of the sun always cancels, so you just take the square root. So I'm going to multiply what I already have times the square root of, oops, the square root of, uh, 0 0.045. All right, and what I get is um, so so the the size of the star uh, turns out to be uh, I'm going to write it above here. Um, so this turns out to be and just leave it in terms of the radius of the sun. So it's going to be it turns out to be 0 0.022 times the radius of our sun. So that's the size of this star and of course this is one of those stars um, you know it has an incredibly high temperature but a very low luminosity um, and that makes it really tiny compared to that of the sun, that of our sun and so this is what what is commonly called a white dwarf. All right let's do the next problem. Okay so here's the second problem it says how many years will it take a planetary nebula shell moving it 20, sorry, 21.6 kilometers per second to, to expand to a radius of 
1.3 parsecs. So, so we know the distance is 1.3 parsecs, all right? So let's, let's uh, here, let me move this out of the way. Let's write that down. So the distance is 1.3 parsecs. But then we're going to use this conversion factor that one parsec is 3.1 um, times 10 to the 13th kilometers, right? So, um, and, and the idea here is we're, we're really working towards this equation here, um, that, that the velocity of anything, as long as it's not changing velocities, it's a nice constant velocity, is the distance divided by the time. And really what we want to know is what the time is. So the time, here, I'll, I'll do it down here. This is ultimately what we're looking for, is the distance divided by the velocity. And, and so the, the velocity, here, let me make that look more like a V. Um, the velocity is, in, um, is given to us in, in kilometers per, per second. Uh, so, so let's convert this distance of 1.3 parsecs to uh, kilometers, right? And so the kilometers will cancel. So we have uh, D is equal to 1.3 1.3 parsecs. Um, and uh, to convert that to kilometers, so, so, so this would be uh, given to you on the test, that one parsec is 3.1 times 10 to the, it's approximately 3.1 times 10 to the 13th uh, kilometers. All right, so, um, so we'll use that as our conversion factor. So we know that one parsec is 3.1 times 10 to the 13th kilometers and let me get my calculator all right so when I do this in my calculator I get 4.03 times 10 to the 13th kilometers so now I can figure out the amount of time that has gone by so the time is going to equal the distance and so I'm going to have 4.03 a decimal point right there, uh, times 10 to the 13th kilometers divided by the velocity that this uh, planetary nebula shell is moving, which is 21.6 kilometers per second. So notice the kilometers cancel Right, that's that's exactly what we want to happen, and then you get one over one over seconds, and so the answer will come out to be in seconds. So I already have this 4.3 times 10 to the 13th in my calculator. I just have to divide by 21.6, and so uh, the amount of time. Remember, the time they wanted to know is in years, right? So we have to figure out the the amount of time in years. Um, and so the time turns out to be, uh, in seconds, 1.8 um, let's say 1.8, it's like 6, 5, 7 and so forth. Um, we'll just ca call it 1.87, right, because um, that, that would round, uh, times 10 to the 12th, times 10 to the 12th seconds. All right, so, so all we have to do is convert that into, um, into, uh, into years. So that's a pretty easy thing. So give me a second here. We'll do this. All right, so let me write it again. So the time, again, remember, we're, we have, we're just converting this into seconds now. We've, already, we've done most of the calculation. So 1.87 times 10 to the 12th. And this is an approximation. Um, you know, this is this has been rounded. I'm just going to use the number the the number that's in my calculator. All right. So I know that there are, of course, 60 seconds seconds in one minute minute, and then of course there's 60 minutes in one hour, and then there are 24 hours. 24 hours in one day, and then there are 365 days in one year. All right, so, uh, you know, everything's canceling, the seconds cancel, 
the minutes cancel, the hours cancel, the days cancel. So you just take this number, which is, uh, like I said, already in my calculator, I'm going to divide by 60 equals, and then divide by 60 again, equals, and then divide by 24, and then divide by 365. And the amount of years that it would take this planetary shell uh, to move, um, you know, if it's moving at that speed, the amount of years it would take to go uh, 1.3 parsecs would be, so it's a lot of years, right? 59,162 uh, years. Right, it's like 162.2, but that, that's perfectly fine, right? So 59, you know, 59,000 years, okay? So that, that gives you some sense of, um, Uh, oh, there it is. Okay. Oops. Okay. Sorry. Let me uh, get to the right thing. There. There we go. Okay. So uh, here's our next problem. Uh, the parallax of a certain star is measured to be 0 0.0088 arc seconds. Um, what's the star's distance in light years? Okay. So um, the, the way that that works is uh, well, first of all, we got to remember that one parsec. Let's, let's write this conversion. Oops. Uh, shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Sorry. Let me uh, let me switch this thing. Pencil mode. There we go. Uh, one parsec. One parsec. Is 3.26. 3.26 light years. All right. So, uh, you know, make, make sure you have that written down. Um, all right, and so the equation that we use, of course, is that the distance is equal to 1 over the parallax, uh, where the parallax is in arc seconds. The parallax get, usually gets the symbol P. And so this is in arc seconds, arc, arc seconds, which, which, you know, this already is in arc seconds, and then the distance is in parsecs. All right, so, so let, let's, let's actually do this one. So it's just the reciprocal of... 0 0.008, sorry. Oh, come on, stop doing this to me. Um, so, 0 0.0088, sorry, I meant to write another 8 there, 88. Eight. All right, and so, um, so the distance, here, I'll, I'll write it down here, the distance turns out to be, oh, let's see, i got to get my calculator. How much time do I have left? Okay, that's plenty of time for this one. So it's going to be 1 divided by 0 0.0088. So the number of, so it's 113.6 parsecs away. 113.6 parsecs. But remember, it says, uh, you know, to, to find the number of light years that it is you know, how far away it is in, in light years. So, so the way that we do this is to use this conversion factor right here. We know that one parsec is 3.26 light years. All right, and the parsecs cancel. And the answer is uh, times 3.26, uh, 370 light years, 370.4, something like that. 370.4 light years. So that's the distance to this particular star. All right, I'll have to make another video for the next, for problem number four.